Hello, Biology 230. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford, and we will continue with Chapter 6, Concept 6.6, .6, as we tour the cell. And today we will cover microfilaments, intermediate filaments, microtubules, and the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is a network of fibers that organizes structures and activities in the cell. Cyto meaning cell, skeleton, just like a skeleton we all know and love, our own skeleton. So the cytoskeleton is the skeleton, if you will, of the cell, providing that structure, that support for the cell is what the cytoskeleton does. And it extends throughout the cytoplasm. And it's composed of three types of molecular structures, it's composed of microtubules, as seen here in blue. It's composed of microfilaments and also of intermediate filaments. Okay, so we have microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Microtubules are the thickest of the three, intermediate filaments being intermediate, so they're in between. And then microfilaments, then, are the thinnest. And the microfilaments are also called actin filaments. So you have microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. This is in yellow, you see the cytoskeleton, stained in yellow. And these are two cells, two different cells. Okay, You can see how much the cytoskeleton, um, how much of the cell is made up of this cytoskeleton. What is the role of the cytoskeleton? It plays three major roles, the support motility, motility, and regulation. It helps to support the cell and maintain its shape. How does it do, um, how does it influence motility? It usually interacts with motor proteins to produce the motility. And we'll touch on um, motility in terms of flagella and cilia material transport. So inside the cell, vesicles travel along monorails that are provided by the cytoskeleton. So let's take a look at this in action. We're going to look at a protein walking on microtubules. Okay. This is a very good animation. And you can see that this is the motor protein and they highlight for you the different organelles. A very quick animation. Okay. And so I just wanted you to kind of get an idea of a protein that was walking on a microtubule and how dynamic this process is. So that was a protein walking along a microtubule. Now, microtubules grow out from a centrosome near the nucleus, and the centrosome is a microtubule organization, organizing center. And you hear a lot more about this in cell division and meiosis and mitosis. And in animal cells, the centrosome has a pair of centrioles each with nine triplets of microtubules arranged in a ring. Now, if you recall, the microtubules are the thickest of the three filaments. And they function to shape the cell. And as you just saw, they guide the movement of organelles. And they separate chromosomes during division. And so this is during cell division. And so these microtubules are vital. So if you just think for a second, if there was some defect in the microtubules that didn't allow chromosomes to separate like they should during cell division, you really would have a major problem. So in this instance, what we're looking here at here is mitosis. Okay, This is, of course, a process of nuclear division. And I want you to just look at what happens um, when, so we're going to move a little faster through this. Now, so now, if you recall from the previous lectures, we go from condensed chromatin to the chromosomes. 
The chromosomes have a kinetic core, which is what's here in the middle. So now, you see this? These are the microtubules. They form and they attach at these kinetic cores. So you can see how important these microtubules are in terms of cell division. So let's play that again. Let's go back. Okay, so we go from condensed chromatin to chromosomes. Don't worry about the different phases. You'll learn that. Okay. Now you have this mitotic spindle here, and it's made of these microtubules. They form, okay, they attach to the kinetic core on each of the chromosomes. You notice that? So I back it up forward so it's attaching to the kinetic core on each of these chromosomes. Okay. The chromosomes begin these these microtubules are moving these chromosomes to the center of the cell. Okay. You see how important these microtubules are. So these microtubules are attached to the kinetic core of each chromosome drawing the chromatids of each one to opposite ends okay, of the cell. Now, look at it. So now, the microtubules are pulling the chromatids apart of each chromosome to the opposite end of the cell until the untached microtubules, as the untached microtubules elongate. See how important these microtubules are in this process of cell division. Okay. When you get a chance, make sure you go and visit this um, McGraw-Hill website and look at mitosis and see how important the microtubules are as they guide movement and separate these chromosomes during cell division. So this is a pictorial diagram of the microtubules and how they form the centrioles. And the centrioles are what really are direct, directing the DNA movement during cell division. Now, cilia and flagella, they're made of microtubules. Okay? And so the microtubules are con in control of the movement of the cilia and the movement of the flagella. And you find this in sperm cells. So that's how sperm move. Okay? Because they're made of these microtubules. Now there's a, mo a motor protein that drives the bending movements of the cilia and the flagella. Okay. This is an ultrastructural view of the cilia and the flagella just to give you an idea, cross section, if we cut it across, what does it look like? Um, you see the microtubules and it's a nine plus two, so there are nine doublets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine doublets. And in the center, there's um, a pair, okay, nine plus two. So in the center, there are two single microtubules, okay? So it's these microtubules are, are important for movement. Now, um, this protein is important because people have studied how it's involved in moving flagella and moving cilia. Now the mechanics of its bending um, and how it resembles walking, a lot of people have studied. And so I don't want you to go into too much detail about how, um, how this process works, okay, step by step. No need to understand that, but I want you to know that people are studying movement they're studying the role of um, the cytoskeleton, and the role of microtubules um, in the movement of various proteins and various organisms. Okay, so now let's go to microfilaments. They're solid filaments and um, they're mainly composed of actin subunits. So you'll see a Double chain, you see here, this twisted chain, this is actin. So microfilaments are, actin filaments are microfilaments. That's what they're called. 
Um, now, what's the role of the microfilaments? Their role is to bear tension. They resist pulling forces within the cell. Now, bundles of these microfilaments make up the core of the microvilli of intestinal cells. Now, when you need their, when there is a need for movement, um, where there's tension that will be applied, the microfilaments will come, will play a role. And then you can think about that in terms of muscle contraction. So actin and myosin are involved in ensuring that muscles, are, muscles contract. Okay. Now, what you see here are microvilli. Okay, and they, they line the intestine. And just by based on their shape, what does this tell you about um, something that we learned earlier? You should be thinking about the fact that this shape, this convoluted shape, increases cell surface area. And so these microvilli villi are supported by microfilaments, as you see here. These are the microfilaments that support the microvilli. They form a network inside the cell membrane. Okay? So this is the membrane of the cell. There's a network of microfilaments under this membrane that is providing structural support. And of course, um, I also want you to remember that these convolutions are increasing surface area. Now, the microtubules um, are the largest cytoskeleton fiber, so you see them here. And then this diagram also shows you the intermediate fibers that are here. And myosin and keratin are intermediate fibers. And microfilaments function in cell motility. And we just mentioned um, the fact that you'll find myosin and actin working together in concert, especially in contraction of muscle cells. Pseudopodia, they extend and they contract using microfilaments. So these are just examples of um, ways in which microfilaments are used for cell motility. So we've already reviewed how actin and myosin play a role in muscle contraction, and that causes movement, so actin is a microfilament. Now let's look at how actin and myosin interacts to produce different other types of movements. So they ensure that cells, if you would crawl, if you will, so we talked about the pseudopodia, so they're involved in making sure or ensuring that the pseudopodia move. Um, cell division, so actin and myosin, they interact um, and you're going to get this again. You will obtain this information again in later chapters when we talk about meiosis and mitosis. But just recall that these microfilaments are also involved in cell division. And then in plants, uh, actin myosin interacts to move this cytoplasm around. Okay? So these are other examples of how microfilaments are involved in cell motility. The last of them is intermediate filaments. So the intermediate filaments support cell shape and they fix organelles in place. Remember, in, si in terms of size, they're larger than the microfilaments, but they're smaller than the microtubules, hence intermediate. Now, if you know of a cell that has to support something that, that has a great strength, a high tensile strength, then you're going to find more intermediate filaments in that cell. Okay. So for example, keratin, which is a cell within the skin, there are a number of intermediate filaments there. And these intermediate filaments, they're more permanent filaments, they're more permanent than the other two. So if you were to digest away um, a cell, you would still have these uh, intermediate filaments lasting for a very long time, even after the microtubules and your microfilaments have been um, digested away. Okay? And the intermediate filaments, on the other hand, they're limited to animal cells and protozoa. And like I mentioned to you, keratin is an example 
of one of an intermediate filament because it really needs um, a high tensile strength. The keratin, that cell really needs support. Okay, So intermediate filaments are not easily disassembled. And you don't want your skin to be easily disassembled. Okay, This web of intermediate filaments, it reinforces the cell shape. And it positions, uh, reinforces the cell shape and the positions of the organelle. So it gives structural stability. Okay. It's prominent in cells that have to withstand some type of mechanical stress. And it forms the most insoluble part of the cell. Okay. So we have reviewed microtubules microfilaments, and intermediate filaments.